Mr. Talibani, thank you so much for making time for us today. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Uh, U.S. troops pull out of Iraq this year. Good idea or bad idea for, uh, by President Obama? Well, it's, it's part of an agreement between Iraq and the United States that the U.S. forces would pull out um, at the end of the year. Um, but we all know, I think, both on the Iraqi side and on the, on the American side, that there still is a lot to do between now and then, and especially in terms of ensuring that the Iraqi security forces and the politics in the country um, will leave behind a stable country if the U.S. troops fully withdraw from Iraq. Should the president reconsider the decision to pull troops out? Um, I think this has got to be something that has to be worked out between Iraq and the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if this topic did get raised and this did get discussed, because I think it's, personally, it, it's quite important for there to be U.S. troops in 2012, because I still think there is a long way to go to ensure a stable uh, and secure and peaceful country. So you would like U.S. troops to stay longer? I'd like the, I'd like the commitment. Um, it's, it's, I think it's beyond your, just your troop presence. Um, the United States has sacrificed a lot for Iraq, a lot, lot in Iraq. So I think it's important for there to be a long-term commitment. Um, it certainly won't look like the kind of commitment that we've seen up until now. We know that Americans want their sons and daughters to come home. We appreciate that, and we, we very much appreciate the, the sacrifice of Americans in Iraq. But we also know that we've come so far. We've made such progress. We're almost there. We're almost at the end of the um, light at the end of the tunnel here. And we're just hopeful that we don't make any decisions um, that will jeopardize the progress that Iraq has made since um, the last few years. Is Iraq prepared for what's next? And we hear these reports that Iraq could descend into a civil war, or even a regional war that could pull uh, Israel in once troops leave. Could this happen? Iraq has come a very long way. Um, the security services are a lot more competent than they were a few years ago. The politics is a lot better than it was a few years ago. We've just recently formed our government and we're trying to build up institutions from the ground up. So Iraq has made progress, but it still has a lot of progress, in my opinion, to make. Because we, what we're trying to leave behind in Iraq, what we're trying to build in Iraq, is a stable federal democracy that can stand on its own feet, be a model for the, for the region, and, and have the full participation of all of the constituent components um, of Iraqi society. Now your father, President Talibani, is very concerned that Iran could fill the power vacuum left by the U.S. Do you share his concerns? Look, all of Iraq's neighbors have an interest in the day after uh, the U.S. leaves. Um, what we're trying to do is build good relations with all of our neighbors, uh, relations built on mutual trust, mutual respect, and non-interference in each other's affairs. Um, so that's, I think, it's a, obviously we, we live in a tricky neighborhood, um, and there has been a lot of interference, some positive, some negative, from several of our neighbors, and we're just hopeful that people will respect Iraq's territorial integrity and, and hope to build trade relations, cultural relations, and political relations with Iraq. So what are the best case and worst case scenarios that we're looking at once troops leave? I think what would be a tragedy is if the security situation were to uh, degenerate after your troops pull out, mm -hmm. and whether it's regional interference, whether it's a re-emergence of Al-Qaeda and others, um, try to destabilize the country again. That would be a, obviously a, a terrible scenario, but we're, 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 we're being optimistic, we're being realistic. Uh, How involved do you think is Iran in Iraq's politics? Iran is a powerful neighbor to Iraq. It is a big uh, neighbor and has a very big border with Iraq. So undoubtedly, it is going to have interests in Iraq. Now, some of those interests are, will be benign, will be will be the kind of interests that normal neighbors have with each other, whether it's uh, trade relations, cultural relations, political relations. But in the past, um, the, Iran has also had a negative impact on the security of Iraq, as have other neighbors uh, in, in Iraq. So what we're hopeful for is that there is a, there is a good climate right now um, and, and we're seeing much less interference from, from the neighborhood. Um, the politics is trying to work itself out. And we are hopeful that the politics will eventually work itself out and, and we can start to implement a system of federalism and build on good governance. Now, we've seen a wave of protests sweeping across North Africa and uh, the Middle East. How do you see this playing out? I think the, um, there's obviously this uh, sense of unrest um, throughout the region. Because, unfortunately, many of the, the governments in, in that part of the world have been dictatorships. 
there hasn't been a, a climate of democracy, a climate of, of free speech or of plural participation. Thankfully, Iraq um, is ahead of the game on that front. Iraq has an elected government. Its parliament is an elected body without one side completely dominating the process. So we're seeing even in Iraq where there have been demonstrations, the demonstrations have been geared towards asking for better services and improved level of governance, not necessarily like in other countries where they've tried to actually bring the system down. Do you think that what's happened in Iraq has influenced um, some of these protests in these other countries? I'd like to think it, it has, um, and I, I hope I'm not just being overly optimistic, but I'd like to think it has because people have seen Iraqis go to the polls, vote for their leaders, uh, and participate in building this new country. Now, of course, Iraq has had its faults, it's had its issues, it's had its complications, but at the end of the day, there is a democratic process in place in Iraq that allows people to vote for their leaders. And we've seen this, again, this handover of power, which really has not been evident throughout the Middle East for, for decades. Mm -hmm. But we've seen it in Iraq. Pre Prime Ministers have come and gone. They've won elections, they've lost elections. Presidents, uh, the same. So I, I think that there, this climate is, is, is positive for Iraq, um, and, it, and it has sent, I think, a powerful message that it can happen in the Middle East, that democracy is not a concept that is purely a Western concept, that it can be applied in the Middle East. It's been happening in Kurdistan since the, since the mid-90s, um, but now, we're, thankfully, it's happening uh, in the rest of the country. Are you concerned at all about the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood and radical Islam in the region? Uh, we're concerned by all forms of extremism, um, and I think that that is something that, that we have to watch very carefully. Um, we have to ensure that, 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 that it's not just a matter of uh, adhering to the, to the will of the majority, but it's also democracy, a key principle of democracy is preserving the rights of the minority. Mm -hmm. and, and I think regardless of who the majority and minority is, we need a system in place that doesn't allow one side, one group or one ideology to dominate the other. So what is your take then on the U.S.'s involvement in Libya? Should Was President Obama right to get the U.S. involved there? I think whenever there is a case of a government oppressing its people, um, powers, uh, responsible powers, must intervene. Now, uh, it's again, I, I haven't been uh, scrutinizing the situation. I, I know there's conflict in Libya. I know that the government forces have been clashing with rebels and, and so forth. But I'm, I'm going to go back to 91 when the Iraqi regime was putting down a Kurdish uprising mm. and the international community sat there and watched it happen. It was only when there was sheer devastation in Kurdistan and millions of refugees fled to the mountains of Iran and Turkey did the international community get into gear, acted on, the, on their morals and ultimately put in place a no-fly zone, believe it or not, um, that secured the Kurdistan region, allowed us to come back down from the mountains. We had our first democratic elections in 92 and we've been building the foundations of democracy ever since. And that here is an example of uh, an intervention mm -hmm. um, that uh, di directly or indirectly created a situation 20 years later where there is Middle East's most thriving, progressive, secular and relatively democratic society. Is President Obama doing enough to support democracy in the region? I think you could always do more to support, to support democracy, um, but democracy is not something that could be implanted. It's not something that could be bought. It's not something that, that you can just put in place or impose on, on, on people. People have to want it. People have to want to, to, to wish for it. And people have to actually have to learn it. Your democracy is 200 plus years old and it's still evolving. Uh, democracy is something that's alive. Um, and I think when you look at Iraq, you're seeing this, you're seeing it's, it's the, the, the early stages of Iraq's democratic progression. In Kurdistan, the same. Um, and I think we'll, we'll see this, we'll see the region um, playing with this concept of, of democracy and we'll have, they'll have difficulties as they try to implement it because, as, as Winston Churchill said, it's, it's, uh, it's messy. Mr. Talibani, thank you so much for your time and please give our best to your father. Thank you. It would be my pleasure too. Thank you. Thank you.